friends are only talking about one thing, and it's this story. An FBI investigation called Operation Varsity Blues. USC, UCLA. And Rick Singer. The mastermind behind the entire operation. Is there any risk that this thing blows up in my face? Hey, Rick. Hey there. Is this a good time? Yeah, yeah, it's good for me. Rick, I had a question for you. It's just you and me. Is that kosher? Absolutely. I just wanted you to walk me through the whole thing again and how it works. We help the wealthiest families in the U.S. get their kids into school. So I've done 761, what I would call side doors. The front door means getting in on your own. <laughs> so I've created this kind of side door in because my families want a guarantee. The Ivy League, the pinnacle of education, the Mount Everest of college success. This is the place where lives are changed. This is the place where millionaires, billionaires, and even trillionaires are made, right? This is the place where people come to change the world. People apply to schools like Stanford, Columbia, Cornell, Princeton, Harvard, and Yale, expecting that at the end of their four years there, they're going to get a ticket to the good life, the life they've always wanted, and have the opportunity to change the world. But is any of this true? Is any of this really true? And more importantly, are these schools even worth applying to? I knew that if I were ever going to do anything on YouTube, I would have to answer the question of, during my four years here, has Princeton University been worth it? And I figured, since I'm only three weeks away from graduation, now was the best time to answer it. But before we get to all that, let me tell you about my story and my journey to this place, as well as what I've learned from it and what I hope you could learn from it as well. So this story really starts eight years ago in the fall of my freshman year of high school. At the time, I was a very, very different student than I am now. I didn't really care about school, didn't really care too much about my grades, and most importantly, I couldn't really see the point of school and anything I was doing in it. And then I remember one particular fall evening, my crush at the time and I went to see this movie called Interstellar. And something about that movie just completely clicked with me and changed my perspective on everything. Something about the adventure, the travel, the idea of going out in the world and experiencing all it had to offer really resonated with me. And I remember I turned to my crush, I looked at her dead in the eyes and told her, I'm going to be one of the first people to leave the solar system. Never being the pragmatic one, she turned back towards me and said, you are absolutely insane. From that day, something had changed. I know it's something to work towards, a goal to hit, and now everything I did had a purpose. And that brings me to lesson number one. So for lesson number one, something I recommend all students have is have a goal. Because with a goal, everything you do now has a purpose. Instead of just learning calculus for the sake of learning calculus, you're learning it to put a rocket on the moon. Instead of learning English for the sake of learning English, you're learning it to become an author, a better writer, and publish a bestseller that will live for thousands of years. With a goal, everything you do is now building blocks to help you get to where you wanna be, instead of just something you do to waste your time. And honestly, you don't even necessarily need to have a 100% surefire direction of where you want to be and where you want to go. Just pick a direction you believe might be interesting and head in that path. You'll find that as you move along and you get better, you'll be able to course correct and get closer and closer to exactly where you want to be. Right 
rest of my freshman year, I was absolutely obsessed with this goal. I watched YouTube video after YouTube video after YouTube video, understanding how rockets worked, the physics behind rockets, the physics behind stars, black holes, quasars, planets, and everything. And I remember watching one YouTube video in particular, and this one completely changed my entire perspective about rocketry, rocket science, and how to become an astronaut. It listed these are the 10 steps you need to take to become an astronaut. Are you ready to do them? And that leads me to lesson number two. Without a real plan to get towards your goal, you will never achieve it. Having a plan gives you the step-by-step -step instructions to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. It's sort of like a roadmap that helps direct the course of your life so that you can figure out the necessary steps you need to take to put you in the right direction to get where you want to go. Let me give you an example to help illustrate this further. Let's say you want to take a road trip from Miami to Seattle. Now, driving from Miami to Seattle is hard. Now, let's say you did it without a GPS or a map. It would be nearly impossible. It's the exact same scenario when people don't have a plan for what they want for their educational future or their life future in general. Without a plan, you'll be left wandering each and every road trying to figure out which one will get you to where you want to go. But having a concrete plan, a step-by-step -step checklist of what you need to do to get to where you want to go will give you a clear idea of which paths you need to take which roads you need to go down so that you can get what you want. If that's going to Princeton, you'll know the 10 things you need to do to get there. If that's becoming a rocket scientist, you'll know the 10 things you need to do to get there. Having a plan makes this crystal clear so that you can know exactly what you need to do moving forward to get closer and closer to that goal. Now fast forward about two years until the fall of my senior year. Everything I'd done to this point would now be sent to a college for them to either accept me or reject me. And after my first few applications, I was plagued with nervousness about what that decision would be. Would they accept me? Would they reject me? Would they defer me? What would happen after I applied? And it got to the point where I couldn't focus in class, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep because this would run through my mind all day. It got so bad that one of my friends came up to me and had a little intervention and said, bro, why are you thinking about this so much? The past is in the past, you can't change it. How about instead you focus on your other applications and make them as good as they can possibly be? And that's when it put things into sharp focus. He was right. Why was I thinking about the past? Why was I focusing on something I couldn't change when I could instead be focusing on my current applications learning from my past applications, and using that information to create something better moving forward. That leads us into lesson number three. Focus on what you can control and ignore the things you can't. Use the past to make your future better and don't dwell on it. Because the past is the past and it's done. You can't change it, you can't influence it, and you can't do anything with it other than learn from it and use it to get better yourself. So let's say you are still interested in going to a school like a Princeton, a Harvard, a Stanford, or a Yale. These are the three main benefits you'll receive from going to a school like this. Number one, there's certain brand name recognition that comes from going to a school like this that you will simply not have at other schools. This brand name recognition opens a lot of doors and gives a lot more opportunities in the future for people because they went to an elite school. For example, in my case, I remember a situation where I missed my BlackRock interview and they sent a follow-up interview hoping to reschedule with me 
instead of simply just throwing me out of the applicant pool and moving on with another applicant. I know 99 times out of 100, they would never do such a thing. But because they go to Princeton, they gave me that second opportunity and opened that door for me to have a second chance. When attending a school like this, a person will have access to students and professors who are doing a number of incredible things, will have the opportunity to network with not only those people, but significant people in a number of different industries across the world. For example, here at Princeton, we have this opportunity called Silicon Valley Tiger Trek, where students who are interested in computer science, engineering, and more information technology have the chance to communicate and develop close bonds with significant minds in Silicon Valley, such as Peter Thiel, Steve Wozniak, and Jack Dorsey. This type of opportunity to connect with the central minds in Silicon Valley and the most, some of the most influential people in the world is an opportunity which many people don't get, but it's available to those who attend schools like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, or Yale. Finally, number three, for those interested in academia, schools like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale are very rigorous schools and they encourage a person to challenge their beliefs about the world and really refine their knowledge about a number of different topics. Furthermore, they also encourage lots of research and intellectual pursuits so that people can explore whatever they want to their heart's content. We have a number of projects which encourage students to not only delve deeper into topics in fields they're interested in, but also in topics in adjacent fields so that they can get a broader view of whatever material they're learning as a whole. If one is interested in pursuing academia or just learning more about a different topic, these type of schools are perfect for doing that. So, all in all, is an Ivy League degree actually worth it? That question is very simple, but the answer is very, very complicated. It depends on the person, their career goals, their life goals, and how they believe these sorts of schools will help them achieve those very different goals. However, there are three main people who will benefit from applying to, getting accepted by, and getting a degree from these sorts of schools. Anyone going to any of the STEM fields will have a massive advantage if they get their degree from a school like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, Yale, etc. The STEM fields as a whole are very competitive at the top, and getting one's degree from a school like this or other schools that are similar will give a person a massive, massive leg up over the rest of the competition in getting the jobs at the places they want. Similar to the STEM fields, the political landscape is very competitive as well. Anyone going to politics or business would get a massive advantage if they come from an elite level school like Princeton, Harvard, etc. Because these jobs are often highly sought after, but there are very few spaces and opportunities for internships, mentorships, and actual jobs coming from an elite level school with the academic rigor and reputation of a Princeton would give a person a massive leg up and advantage over everyone else who didn't. So it would definitely be worth considering applying if one is interested in going to their politics or business at some point in the future. Finally, three, academia. Coming to school like Princeton will help give a person a substantial leg up in applying to anything in the academic space, as it will give them select choice on the opportunities they want instead of those they have to settle with. When you go to a school like Princeton, the certain reputation of its rigor and prestige and allow many more opportunities to be open to you and allow a person to have first choice on where they go for their master's degree or PhD or where they might want to teach as a professor. So going to a school like this will definitely be beneficial for anyone who's considering pursuing a career in the academic space. Just as there are three main people who benefit from coming to an elite school, like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, there are also three main people who would probably be better served going to a different type of school or different type of program. 
The first type of person who probably wouldn't benefit from going to a school like this are the people who are creatives, who are interested in art, music, and literature. These type of people usually at the end of their four years get pushed into either journalism or politics, and oftentimes don't like the space they end up in because they anticipated themselves being more in the art world or the music world or the literature world as a whole. Now, if one is interested in art, music, or literature, I'd advise them to pick a school and focus on a school that is solely focused on those different types of art as those schools will have more opportunities and more career advice, as well as more networking opportunities to allow someone to thrive in that space, instead of usually pushing them towards a more employable job in the political and or journalism spaces. Secondly, anyone who is more entrepreneurial and focused on creating their own business will find it very difficult in a place like this as for the most part, schools like this gear students towards maximum employability. So someone who's focused on creating their own business, working on their own projects, will find it very difficult in a space like this and find it very difficult to resist the tide of being employed for the most part. If one is interested in being an entrepreneur, starting their own business, out of all the schools in this sort of list, I'd recommend they apply to the University of Pennsylvania and or work on their own business in lieu of going to college. At least trying it out, testing their hand, testing the waters, instead of simply jumping head first into a school like this. Now finally, the third type of person who would find it very difficult a school like this, or a school like this wouldn't probably be the best fit for them, are people who learn more hands-on. Now, these sort of students usually struggle at the school as everything at a school like this is very intellectual. It's very abstract and intellectual and very theory driven. So the actual hands-on learning, the hands-on approach is rarely seen here. If you're the type of student who learns more hands-on, what I recommend is I'd recommend applying for a career more in the trades as they'll allow for the best type of learning and be most conducive to your type of education. I hope this was helpful in helping you learn about Princeton, the pros, the cons, whether it might work for you or not. And if it was, please feel free to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and also leave a comment below letting me know what you might want to see in the future. Whether it's how to get into Princeton, how to write college essay, tips and tricks for applying, anything. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please let me know down in the description below. I also included one free ebook that should give a clear idea of what to expect during your high school years that every single high school student should read to help give them sort of like a roadmap on what to expect, what to look out for, as well as the things they will see as they move through the high school journey or thing. If you found this helpful, make sure to share it with a friend, hit the like if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe for more information like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Another video coming out in the next couple weeks about what it really takes to get to school in Princeton and the couple myths and preconceptions people have about applying to schools like this and what they need to do to get in versus what they actually need to do to get in. You'd be surprised about how many myths there are and what it actually takes to get to a school like Harvard or Stanford or MIT or Yale. You don't want to miss this one. So hit the subscribe button to make sure you stay tuned for all videos like this. Hit the like button if you thought those were helpful. Share with a friend because sharing is caring. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to spend this time with me. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you soon.